Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about static NAT and if you haven't yet, check out the introduction to NAT tutorial which is located in the ICND1 videos. There's a lot of good background information that will really be useful as you continue this next series and learn a lot more about the different types of NAT. Okay, so as a real quick summary, IP version 4 address depletion has been occurring for quite some time and at this point we're pretty much we're out of IP version 4 addresses. Now NAT was introduced to alleviate that problem and it did a great job. Also they introduced the concept of private IP addressing and that helped out a lot, of, uh, a lot as well in terms of preserving IP version 4 addresses. But there are other uses to using NAT and one of them is when you migrate networks. Instead of going in and taking everything down and renumbering everything, you can use NAT to help you gradually migrate over to a new IP scheme. Or if two businesses, let's say, merge and you're responsible for integrating the two different networks, sometimes there's overlapping. In other words, both companies use some of the same private IP ranges. Well, you may have to use NAT in order to get these two different networks to be able to successfully route to and from each other until you can go ahead and renumber some of the machines. Okay, so another aspect just to quickly uh, refresh our memory are some of the terms that will come up often in NAT and you really need to know these. So the first one is the inside local address and this is the IP address assigned to a host on the inside of a network. Oftentimes this is a private IP address, but this is the original uh, IP address on a host. So that's inside local. The next one is inside global. And now this is a legitimate valid IP address which is assigned by a service provider and that is going to be used to represent the inside addresses like the inside local address to the rest of the world because private IPs cannot be routed over the internet, right? So the inside global is the IP address used for NATing. Now there are two others. The first one is the outside global address. And quite simply, this is the legitimate IP address assigned to a host somewhere on the internet. And that's usually where you're trying to get to. There's also the outside local address. And this is an IP address of an outside host as it appears to the inside hosts. What I mean is, it's not always the same address as the far end host, as the outside global address. Because in some of the other tutorials we'll learn that you can not only NAT inside addresses, but you can NAT outside addresses as well. So if you're going to change your outside global, well, that's where the outside local comes into play. Okay, so keep these four terms in mind, and as we go through the NAT tutorials, they'll become more and more obvious, and you really need to know these because a lot of the router output uses these terms. So when you're verifying NAT, you really need to know what they mean. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at static NAT, the first of the three types of NAT that we're going to discuss. Let's start with some of the basic concepts of static NAT. So a public IP is going to be used for each private IP when we NAT. This is often referred to as a one-to-one -one mapping. Okay, and it's going to be configured on the router. That's where the NATing takes place. And what this means is the private IP, every time it needs to access something on the internet and it needs to be NATed, it's going to use the same public IP every time. So that's why it's referred to as static. It doesn't change unless you manually change it. Otherwise, it's going to be the same all the time. Okay, so that's why the one-to-one -one mapping makes sense when you think about it. All right, so those are the basic concepts of static NAT. Fairly straightforward, right? Let's take a look at an example of static NAT. So we have our PC behind the router, which is then connected to the internet, and we want to go ahead and reach that web server. So we'll source some traffic from the PC. And here's what the packet information is going to look like. We're going to have a destination IP address, which is where we're going to, and then obviously the source IP address, where we're coming from. Now, 
When this traffic hits the router, the router is going to know that it has to be NATed based on its configuration and its NAT table. So let's take a look at that configuration. It's a simple one line and it starts off with IP NAT, inside source static, and then we list two IP addresses. So let's go ahead and break down this command. IP NAT just begins the NAT statement itself. The first parameter is inside and what this is telling the router is we want to go ahead and translate traffic from the inside of our network. So in other words the 192.168.1.2 IP address that's on the inside of our network and that's what we're interested in. The next parameter is source and that means what exactly from that inside traffic are we going to translate. Here we're saying that we want to translate the source IP address. So 192.168.1.2 is what we want to change. Static simply means this is going to stay the same all the time. It does not change unless we manually change the configuration. And then after it, first we list our inside IP address, which you can see here is the PC. And then we list the IP address that we're going to use to NAT that IP. And you can see 201. 2.2.1 matches the IP address on interface serial 010. Okay, so that's the simple line to create a static NAT. But there's a little bit more to do. Because we told the router that we're interested in translating our inside traffic, well, we also then have to tell the router which interface is inside. So on Fast Ethernet 01, we would add this line to the interface configuration. IP NAT inside. This tells the router that any traffic coming in on this interface is traffic from the inside of our network. Likewise, since we define an inside, the router needs to know, well, where's the outside? And so on serial 010, we would put the interface subcommand IP NAT outside. And that identifies which interface is used to reach the outside networks. Okay? And so now the router sees this and it's going to change our source IP address from 192.168.1.2 over to 201.2.2.1. And then the traffic is sent, to go, uh, sent ahead to the web server. Now when the web server returns traffic to us, the destination is going to be 201.2.2.1 because that's where it saw it sourced from to begin with. When the router receives that traffic, it's going to go ahead, look at its NAT table, and figure out, ah, okay, this matches what I uh, translated earlier. I need to change it back now. So it will then go ahead and change the destination of the return traffic back to the 192.168.1.2, and it'll leave the source as the web server because our PC needs to know that IP and port information so that it can go ahead and properly process that packet. Okay, so these are the configurations, and let's actually go ahead and jump on a router and, and make this happen. Okay, so we're on router A, and we'll configure our NAT here. So first we want to configure our NAT command, our static NAT. IP NAT, we're interested in our inside traffic, that's what we want to translate. We want to translate the source IP address of the inside traffic. And this is going to be a static NAT, meaning it'll never change unless we manually update it. Now the inside IP is 192.168.1.2, the IP address of our PC. And the outside IP is going to be 201.2.2.1. Now, only two more commands to configure. Our inside interface is FA00.5. Now, this is a sub-interface, but it doesn't matter. And our outside interface is a serial interface. So we can look at the configurations now. There's our inside. You can see the subnet matches our host. And we have the inside command. 
and our serial interface IPNAT outside and you can see we have two IP addresses configured one's a primary one's a secondary and we just happen to choose the secondary for our NATing. If we look at the entire configuration we can see here our IP NAT statement. So we've confirmed our configurations. Now let's go ahead and actually confirm if NAT is working. And we do that by looking at the, the NAT translations table. The command we want is show IP NAT translations. And here it is. So this will list all four IPs if they're actually being used. In other words, if the router is actively NATing a particular session. So right here on the far left, it'll list what protocol is being used. And then the terms we discussed are now listed. That's why it's so important to know those because the router actually uses them to give you information. So inside local is our PC. Inside global is what we'll use to NAT that particular IP. And then our outside local and outside global are currently empty because we haven't sourced any traffic yet from our PC. So let's do that. Let's go ahead, go, let's go ahead and have our PC ping the web server 170. 7.7.2. Okay, so I just did that. Now let's take a look at the translations table. And you can see we have a new entry. The protocol is ICMP, which is what it should be because I pinged it. And the inside local and the inside local remain the same. However, look at the outside local and the outside global now. The outside global is the IP we were looking to, to reach, 170.7.7.2. And because we didn't make any changes to the outside global, the outside local is the same, 170772. So the IP NAT translations command is very useful in determining uh, what uh, active NATs are listed on the router. If you're curious or if you're having trouble with NAT, you can always issue the debug IP NAT command as well. Then when a session is created, you can go ahead and look in your logs for information about the NAT. Okay, so to summarize, you now know how the static NAT functions. And to configure it, it's actually pretty simple. There are only three commands we need to know. The first one is to set up that static one-to-one -one mapping. After you do that, all you have to do is tell the router which interface is on the inside and which interface is on the outside. And that's it. Now, if you had five more of these to do, all you'd have to repeat is the first command where you're stating your mapping. So, don't forget, every mapping is unique, okay? Now, you can check your running configuration, but if you really want to know how NAT is functioning, how it's actually working, you need to get familiar with the show IP NAT translations command. That tells you the source information, um, what IP is used to translate that IP, and then what destination you're going to. It's a very helpful command, uh, especially for troubleshooting. On that note, if you are having some serious problems, you can always enable debugging for NAT, and that'll give you additional insight in the, lo in the logs that you can look at in order to help you figure out what's not working. Okay, so that's it. That is static NAT. Thanks for watching.